Hey guys, welcome back to Bumble TV. Guys, today we're going to check in out this video that is 20 minutes long. I probably have to do this. But we're going to check in out what happens after the world ends. Let's check this out. Islamnet is establishing a huge masjid complex in Norway. If you donate to establish and maintain this masjid, you will inshallah be sharing in the rewards for the salah being established in that masjid five times a day and all of the dawah and shahadas from the non-Muslims. Click the button to donate and secure reward inshallah and share this video for extra rewards. So death comes and there's different endings. And then you're placed in the grave, alone in the darkness of the grave. And both the living above the surface and the dead below the surface are moving towards an inevitable day, the day of judgment. The Rasul said, how can I relax? The custodian of the trumpet has lifted it to his mouth. Focused, attentive, when will the Lord decree that I blow the trumpet? But before its advent, the Prophet told us the signs will appear. That when these come to pass, know that the hour is close. Both major signs and minor signs and the small signs multiple. In one hadith, amazing hadith, a stranger comes into the gathering of the Rasul. And then he says, Tell me, O oh Muhammad, about the hour. So he said, the one you're asking doesn't know more than the one who was asking. <laughs> so then he says, tell me it signs. So he says, when a lady gives birth to her master. It was unheard of then. They lived in servitude of their parents. And then the second sign, when you see the barely clothed, barefooted, destitute shepherds and goat herders competing in the heights of buildings. So I researched who is competing in the heights of buildings. The tallest building on earth today, where is it? Dubai. When the barefooted destitute will compete in the heights of buildings. So I said, maybe coincidence. A few years before that, the clock tower of Mecca. And now, the Saudis have thought, let's make another one. One kilometer in the air. Who would have thought at the time where they used to build with pebbles, houses that barely had roofs, that they would compete in skyscrapers? The small signs the scholars say is almost done. There's just a few left. Then comes the big signs. How will they come? They are like beads on a necklace. When it gets cut, they will follow one after the other. The Dajjal comes. Masih comes, Isa alayhi salam. Ya Juj and Majuj come. The sun rises from the west. A landslide in the east, a landslide in the west, and one in the Arab Peninsula. A fire that will start from Yemen. The major signs is what we're waiting for. But when the Amr comes, blow the trumpet. When the trumpet is blown, whatever's in the heavens and earth will be destroyed. When the first trumpet is blown, the earth rises and then Allah Rabbul Izza says not just the flat earth, the mountains rise and they are shaken one shake. And mountains, the gigantic will fly around like pieces of scattered wool. And you look up, the heavens are starting to tear. And you look at the sun, the sun has gone down. And the stars lose their shine. The stars start to fly around. And you look at the oceans and the oceans erupt. As in the waves will burst and then it will be on fire, like it will be an explosion, an ignition. So this is what happens. The creation changes, the mountains fly about, the earth is destroyed, buildings come crumbling down. Everything that you know is an utter ruin and it's the most catastrophic day in the existence of creation. And this is the first blow. The duration between the first blowing of the trumpet and the second blowing of the trumpet there's a duration of 40. Whether it's 40 minutes, 40 hours, 40 days, 40 years, 40 thousands of years, Allah Azza wa Jalla knows better. But then what happens in between the two blowings of the trumpet 
There is a weak narration that says every single living thing and every single human being, jinn, animal and angel will be dead. Except those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees not to die. So the scholar said, those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees not to die are angel Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, the eight angels that carry the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal and the angel of death. So the angel of death will come to Allah and he'll speak to Allah and say, Ya Allah, all your creation is dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, and who stayed alive? And Allah knows better. So the angel of death will say, Ya Allah, it is only angel Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, the eight angels that carry your throne, and you and I, Ya Rabbil Alameen, are alive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command for the death of Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael. So the angel of death will say, Ya Rabb, all your creation is dead. So Allah Azza wa say to him, and he stayed alive. So the angel of death will say, Ya Allah, it is only the eight angels that carry your throne. You and I, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the death of the eight angels that carry his throne. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the soul of the angel of death. For no living thing to exist except Allah. After Allah azza wa ta'ala granted every single creation of his death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start asking questions. So Allah Azza wa Jal will say, Where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? To whom is the kingdom today? No response comes back to Allah. And who's there to respond back to Allah? Everyone is dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the second time. Where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? To whom is the kingdom today? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the third time. Where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? To whom is the kingdom today? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer himself the true Lord and only Lord and no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the irresistible, the most powerful one. And then after Allah Rabbul Izzah sends down water and this water is like a sticky, gooey substance. And through it and from it, Allah Rabbul Izza remakes the bodies of men. And you are made whole, but you're under the ground. And then orders Israfil, come up again, Israfil. So the blower of the trumpet is resurrected. He comes up. And then he tells him, blow again. And he blows again and they get resurrected. The land is a different land. The ground is white. The land is barren. It is flat. The mountains have been shifted. And how are they resurrected? The Prophet says, barefooted, naked, uncircumcised. Like the day you were first made in the first time. And as they come out of their graves, there is darkness. The sun comes a mile away from the heads of humankind. And humankind are in that heat and they start to sweat. So some stand in puddles of sweat up to their ankles, some to their knees, some to their waist, some to their shoulders. Some people are drowned in it. Based on the wrong that you have done. And how long will the day last? 50,000 years. Who will flock to Adam alayhi salam or oh Adam you are the prophet of Allah ask Allah azza wa jal to make it easy upon us so what would Adam say go to Nuh so then people will flock to Nuh alayhi salam oh Nuh you are the messenger of Allah ask Allah azza wa jal to make it easy upon us so Nuh will reply to them the way Adam replied to them go to Ibrahim so they'll go to Ibrahim and they'll say the same thing they said to Nuh and Adam. And Ibrahim will say to them, go to Musa. So they flock to Musa and same thing. So they flock and resort to Isa alayhi salam. So Isa again says to them, go to someone else. I'll tell you who to go to. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So people will resort 
and flock to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah. It's too hard for us. Ask Allah to make it easy upon us. He'll reply to them and he'll say to them, I am the one that's made for this moment and for this day. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will go under the throne of Allah and prostrate under the throne of Allah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I'll supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with supplications that I've never ever supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with before. Allah Azza wa Jalla will inspire the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to supplicate with those special supplications during that special time. And while the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is prostrating under the throne of Allah, supplicating to Allah, seeking Allah Azza wa Jalla's forgiveness and mercy upon his ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe and the Lord of the day of judgment, he will call upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh Muhammad, Put your head up. Ask, you'll be given. Intercede, we'll accept your intercession. So the Prophet والسلام, will put his head up and then he'll stand up from his prostration. He'll say, Ya Rab, my nation, my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, we will take out of the hellfire anyone from your nation that had Iman equal to a seed of wheat. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will ask Allah for more. So he'll prostrate to Allah azza wa the second time. And he'll supplicate to Allah azza wa with supplications they had never supplicated to Allah azza wa with before. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, O oh Muhammad, put your head up, ask you'll be given, intercede, will accept your intercession. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand up from his prostration. And then again, he'll say, Ya Rabb, my nation, my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second time will say to Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, we will take out of the hellfire from your nation anyone who had iman equal to the weight of an Adam. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will seek for more. So he prostrates to Allah the third time. And he supplicates to Allah azza wa jal with a supplication that he had never supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with before. So Allah Azza wa Jalla will call upon him, O oh Muhammad, put your head up, ask you'll be given, intercede, we will accept your intercession. So the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam will stand up from his prostration. Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, my nation, my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, we will take out of the hellfire anyone that had ever said, La ilaha illallah. The angels start to pour down, row after row, group after group, on this plain land. And then the Hamalatul Arsh come, and mankind move towards the place where they will stand before Allah Rabbul Izza and will be made accountable for their deeds. And they will be lined up one line. There isn't a word being uttered. And Jahannam has been brought, being pulled with 70,000 chains trying to control it. And each chain being handled by 70,000 angels. And when Jahannam sees creations, it hisses towards them. Angry because the Lord of Jahannam is angry. And then in this situation, Allah Rabbul Izza beckons Adam, Ya Adam. So Adam says, at your beck and call, Ya Rabb. All good is in your hands, Ya Rabb. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, separate the portion of hell from your children. And what is the portion of hell? So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, from every thousand, nine hundred and ninety-nine for the fire. And as the utterance comes, the hair on the head of babies will grow gray. It'll be said to them, you certainly have come to us individually, like you were created in the first place. Rather, you have claimed that we will not make for you an appointed time, Yom Al Qiyamah. The book shall be placed, and then you'll see the criminals. They are afraid of what's in it because they know the wrongdoings they have done. They're terrified of what's in their record of deeds. And they will say, Woe to us! What is it with this book? It does not leave any big deed or small deed except that it is recorded and they're going to find that which they have done present in front of them and your Lord does not oppress anyone. The people, they will be given their books 
either on the right or the left or behind their backs. As for the one who is given his book on his right hand, he will say, look, here's my book, read my book. He's going to be proud, happy, rejoicing. As for the one who is given his record, on his left hand, he will say, I wish I was not given my record. He's going to wish that he was destroyed. He's going to say, all that which I possess in this world, it did not benefit me. It has all been destroyed. And he's going to be shackled up and thrown into the punishment of Allah. The criminals will be told, read your book. Your nafs is enough of witness against you. Read your record. You've done this. And then after that, Allah Taala, once he has done the hisab, the next stage it is al-mizan, where the deeds are weighed. They're placed on the scale. Allah says, as for the one, their scales of good deeds are heavy. They are the successful. And as for the ones that their scales are light, they are the ones who have lost themselves. They're the failures, the losers. And they're going to be in Jahannam forever. That fire, it is going to blaze and burn off their faces to the extent that even their lips are burnt off and it looks like they're smiling because they have no lips, their teeth are exposed. That is the situation. Allah Taala He says, we're going to place the just scales on the Day of Judgment and not a single soul is going to be oppressed in any way, even if it's an atom worth. It's an atom weight of deed. Allah says, we're going to bring it. And then after that stage, the people, they're going to be put into groups, those who are drawn close. And the second party are the people of the right. And the third party are those who denied, who are from the misguided ones, those three parties. And the people will be distributed based on who they were like in this world and who they followed and who they loved. If you loved the Prophet and the companions and the righteous and you followed them, you'll be with them Yom Al Qiyamah. And if you love the evil people and the disbelievers and the wrongdoers, you'll be with them Yom Al Qiyamah. They will be told, guide them to the path of Al Jaheem. And this is the next stage, that after the people are gathered into different parties and the righteous will be all together and then they will be granted light based on their righteous deeds. And the hypocrites will also be following the believers and they will have utter darkness, no light at all. Allah says the day you're going to see the believing men and the believing woman. That light is going to be in front of them and on their side, they're right. They're going to have light around them. It will be set and glad tidings to you today you're going to have gardens of paradise. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, the day that the male hypocrites and the female hypocrites are going to say to the believers, wait for us, give us some of your light. It will be said, go back and search for light for yourself. And then there'll be a wall, barrier placed between them. And then once that happens, now they go to the next stage. And this is the stage that they're going to a bridge. This bridge, the Prophet والسلام, he described it. It is as thin as a hair. It is as sharp as a sword. Every single one of us is going to cross that bridge. Amongst the people are those who are going to cross it as fast as light. Amongst the people are those who are going to cross it as fast as a horse. Amongst them are those who are going to cross it as running, walking, crawling. And some will fall into it based on your righteous deeds. And the believers, they cross that bridge. Once they cross that bridge, they get to a stage. And this is one of the final stages before they enter paradise. It is where Allah Taala He gets back all the rights of the people for each other. Allah Taala is going to make sure that everyone gets their rights back. And then on top of that, Allah Azza wa removes all ill feelings and all of hatred and jealousy and all those bad feelings that were in the hearts from their hearts. And then after that, it is a matter of entering paradise. It will be said to the people of Jannah, there is life forever, eternity, no death. They enjoy it forever. Everything the eye is pleased by, everything they desire, they have it. And the angels are going to enter upon them from every gate. It will be said to them, peace be upon you for your patience in this world. And that's the point. All of this they attained is due to their patience the patience they had in this world. That they were patient with the obedience of Allah Taala, Being patient in refraining from what Allah Azza has prohibited. Being patient with the painful decree of Allah Taala, Because they know that this world, it is temporary and they're going to go to that home of the hereafter, which is eternity. And they're going to be happy forever there. They know that, so they're patient, working hard and striving for that. They're going to be told by the angels, peace be upon you due to your patience.
Islamnet is establishing a huge masjid complex in Norway. If you donate to Islam, guys, we know with this guy. Kind of sweating a bit, but this was beautiful. I I can say that there is a lot of similarities between Muslims and Christians because most of the things that we talked about the end time, I kind of already know, and it's crazy that we are this similar but still way way distant apart. But talking of this, like it's saying you wait by your good days. But what got to me was the part he said that God is gonna kill everyone in the world. Everyone, I mean everyone and everyone. Like that part got to me. I haven't read it or come across it. Guys, tell me what to think of that part, guys. Tell me what to think of the entire video. Like I want to know if it's legit or not. Like tell me, I wanna know your suggestion. Guys, just to like, share, subscribe my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.